In this video, we're gonna give you two case studies that show how useful and awesome the tarantula curve is. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete crazy person. I wanna say a big thanks to Daniel Cook and also to Riyadh Al Turkey for their help with this work. The first case study has to do with the LaGuardia Airport. This is a bridge deck that they were placing the New York Port Authority asked me to look at. This is a pretty cool project. The contractor had been working heavily on a mixed design. They'd done 30 or 40 trial batches. They thought, you know, maybe it could be better, but they were pretty happy with it. They didn't tell me any of that. They didn't tell me anything other than, I have a concrete mixture and we want you to look at it. We want you to try to make it better. Their mix is shown on the left. The mix that I redesigned is shown on the right. I used the same aggregates they were using, 467 stone, number eight. I used a sand, a natural sand, their cement, their class F fly ash, everything was the same. I redesigned it with the tarantula curve spreadsheet. Their original mix design looks something like this. They had high amounts of number four, but everything else in the mix looked great. I knew that if I was able to drop that high amounts of number four, then I could lower the pace content and still get a similar workability. I'll say that again. Their aggregates were a little bit wacky. I knew that if I could bring them back in line, that I would need less cement paste because I would need less lubricant in the mixture. So how did I do that? Well, I dropped the amount of number four and I increased the amount of three quarters and a little bit of the sand. This is what my mix design looked like. This was theirs, this was mine. Totally designed, just conceptually. And I said, we need to trial batch it. So they did. Now, one thing I love to do when I trial batch concrete is I like to do it at first with no admixtures in it because I wanna see what my slump is from just water. And I noticed that I had a zero slump. I usually like a little bit higher than that, but that's what they had. So then we started adding water reducer. We used the exact same amount of water reducer that they did in their mixture. And we got a four and a half inch slump, 4.6% air. They added air, they added super plasticizer, slump went up. We added a little bit more, just a splash more and we ended up getting a seven inch slump. There was no retarder in these trial batches. If we had a retarder, it was a B slash D, a type B slash D retarder. We would expect our slump to go up even more, but this is what we got in our lab. So what do we say? An equivalent amount of slump for a little bit more water reducer, but we saved 50 pounds of cement. Here's what the mixture looked like when they finished it. Here's case study number two. The Minnesota DOT started to go to something called optimized graded concrete. They tried to better pay attention to their aggregations. When they started between 1996 and 1998, this is where their mixtures plotted on the tarantula curve. This is where the contractor's mixtures plotted on the tarantula curve. They're all over the place. And the performance of these concretes were also all over the place. But over time, in, by 2009, 87% of the mixtures were falling within the tarantula curve. By 2010, over 98% of the concrete mixtures that the contractors were producing was falling within the tarantula curve and they were getting better and better performance every year. You know what the crazy thing is? In 2010, the tarantula curve didn't exist. The contractors are iterating on their own to finding the tarantula curve and they didn't even know it existed. We went it from a totally different way, systematically changing every single gradation and finding the limits and telling people why those limits existed. When two groups find the same answer from two different directions, that's important. That's telling you something. We've got similar data out there for Iowa and Michigan contractors where they're doing the exact same thing. 
Minnesota, when they went out and measured the, the, how smooth their pavements were, they found that as their mixtures got more and more inside the tarantula curve, they got smoother and smoother. Let me show you in this graph. On the x-axis are, are the years. And on the y-axis, on this y-axis, it shows the percentage of the mixtures within the tarantula curve. And you can see the blue line shows that there weren't very many in. They got more in, then they got more in, and finally they ended up with about 90%-ish inside the tarantula curve. And this is the smoothness. This is rough versus smooth. When the mixtures were outside the tarantula curve, they were rough. And as they got more and more in, they became more and more smooth. Why? Probably because the contractors had to work the concrete a lot less. Also, when it comes out of the slip form paver, the mixtures inside the tarantula curve have a very, very sharp edge. That's what you want. So in summary, contractors and owners are successfully using the tarantula curve to design their concrete mixtures. And this is why DOTs in Texas, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota have all started to specify the tarantula curve in their concrete mixtures. This is why I get emails from contractors and producers all over the world that have asked me questions about the tarantula curve and tell me that they're having great success with it. What's the future? We're working on right now to extend the tarantula curve even further to better understand manufactured sands. We're including even more case studies. We're using the tarantula curve to reduce pumping pressures. And we're also doing some really cool experiments that I hope to share with you in the future that tell you why the tarantula curve works. Hey, thanks everybody. My name is Tyler Lay again. I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and tell me what concerns or what would you like to see the tarantula curve be able to do to help you out. Take care, bye.